Hey guys, I'm Russell, the Weekend Adventurer. Today, we're going to talk about insulation. Insulation is really important, and we're going to talk about two different ways that we're going to use it on the trail. Number one, water bottles. Last time I was out hiking, I found a uh, Boy Scout troop. The temperature was somewhere in the negative tens. It, it was a cold day. Don't, you know, don't get me wrong. And most of their water was all frozen. They were carrying their water bottles without any type of insulation. And that water, once it's frozen in your water bottle, not only is it useless, but it's also heavy. So you have to either discard your water bottle, which is littering, or you carry around this useless weight. So we're going to insulate our water bottles so that doesn't happen. I'm going to teach you guys how to build insulators uh, like this so that you don't have to buy expensive ones like this. This little uh, this silly little thing here um, is probably thirty dollars. You don't need to spend thirty dollars on one of these when we can make one ourselves out of some old open cell foam. The other part of the insulation uh, that we're going to talk about is making a pot cozy uh, for our pot and fast cooking. I'm going to make that out of some home insulation. This can also be used for the water bottle, which is why we're going to do both things today. So, all right, let's get started. We're going to start first with the water bottle. Now, I'm using a Nalgene. You can use whatever water bottle you have. Uh, but you measure, <clears throat> you take some open cell foam, and you measure how high your water bottle is. In this case, I've already done it. Um, you just lay it flat on the open cell foam, measure how high you want it to be, and either with a razor or a sharp pair of shears, you cut out the length you want it to be. For a fastener, I just use duct tape. I'm going to wrap a little bit of the duct tape on the inside, as you can see like this to give it that extra reinforcement. And now, our bottle should fit right inside. We still have an open bottom there. For that, you measure around the water bottle, and either with, once again, a razor or a sharp pair of shears, you cut out the bottom, and you just duct tape that piece on. And that, my friends, is going to keep our water bottle from freezing. Now, before you head out, you want to take warm water and put it into your Nalgene. Or when you're in camp, uh, before you head out for the day, you want to boil water, throw it in your Nalgene. It doesn't have to be boiling, but it should be warm. And then put it in your water bottle insulator here, and that's going to keep it good for almost all day. Another tip that I sometimes use is to leave my water bottle upside down in my backpack as long as its uh, top is on securely. Water will freeze from the top down. If it freezes where you open up your water bottle, well you're not going to be able to drink from it anymore because it just froze at the top and sometimes you can't even get the top off. So if it is going to be in any danger of freezing at all, you might want to pack it in upside down so that when it starts to freeze, it starts to freeze at the bottom. Best tip, if your water's going to freeze and you either have two water bottles, you're not going to drink it, do your best first off to drink it. Um, but if your water is going to freeze, dump it out. It's not going to help you frozen in your water bottle, so dump it out. Alright, let's move on to making a pot cozy. Now I use different material for making a pot cozy. And uh, that's because you don't want hot metal that you just took off of from your, your camp stove to be up against open cell foam. This is just plastic, it's going to melt immediately. This has a layer of tin foil on it, and so it's not going to melt. Now although the innards of this is a synthetic type of uh, plastic and fiberglass mix, it's not going to melt um, like obviously open cell foam would. Well, let's get cutting. Now just like we did with our pot cozy, we're going to measure how tall our pot is, mark it, and 
and then cut along that line until we think we have a sufficient length. Now I'm cutting on a very old table, so I don't mind putting marks in it, and I'm just going to use an old razor. Okay, that looks like it's far enough. Now that I've got this marked, and I know exactly where I want it to be attached, I have to attach it with some type of tape. Normal duct tape is just going to melt once again onto the metal because normal duct tape has a lot of plastic in it. Not what we're looking for, we're not looking to ruin our pot. So what I've purchased here is some aluminum tape. It's very strong, very sticky stuff. It's not the easiest to work with, but it does work well. I actually had to peel it off of a backing. We'll attach this here. Okay. Now we should have the wrap around done on our bottle. I mean, on our uh, pot cozy here. And we do. That's looking real good. Now we need to make a base for this guy. To make the base with the pot still in the wrap, I'm going to take a marker and just mark around the bottom. of where I want to cut. Pull out the razor and cut it. Now that we have our base, we're going to attach it on once again by using the tape. Now some of you out there might be saying, hey Russ, what the heck is a pot cozy and why do I need one? Well, truth is you don't. You don't need one. But they're really nice to save fuel with. Um, once, let's take pasta for example, uh, or just a ramen noodles. Once you've got your water to a boil, you pull your pot off of the stove and throw it into your pot cozy. The pot cozy will maintain that high temperature, not at a boil, but just underneath. And that's going to continue to cook those ramen noodles. So you're going to be, you know, once you've got it to a boil, you can pull it off your stove, blow it out. It continues to cook your ramen noodles, or let's say a major heat waster is rice, okay? Once you've got that to a boil, you've got your rice in there, you've got it still with the continuous boil, you drop it into your pot cozy, and your rice will cook without wasting all that excess fuel. That is what makes pot cozies so valuable. Um, not necessarily on an overnight or maybe a two day, but it makes it really valuable if you're on a couple day hike or even a through hike. Um, pot cozy is a great tool. Okay, to make the lid and the final section of the pot cozy, you put your pot back down on your material, make the circle, cut it out, and then attach the lid with a piece of aluminum tape on one side and a piece of aluminum tape on the other. When you're done, you should have a really nice pot cozy that your pot fits right into. Your lid will flip right onto. Uh, this one I actually made a little bit too tight, and so the lid doesn't really want to stay down, which isn't a big deal, because when you're outside there's plenty of rocks or whatever, and you just throw a rock on top or um, something with a little bit of weight and it'll keep it down while your food is staying warm and cooking so that's it hope you guys enjoyed it uh i use pot cozy every time i go and uh it's a nice tool so i'll see you guys out on the trail